McDonald and Douglas are two of the most friendliest, well-respected and hard-working engines on the Fat Controllers Railway. Their main job is to take all the important goods trains in the island of Soda. But sometimes they shunt coaches or take shorter trains. One afternoon, the twins brought another very important goods train into Brendan Docks. They arrived just in time. Then Donald saw the Fat Controller speaking with the dockyard manager. Oh no, cried Donald, we must be late. I told you to fill up and call the night before, said Douglas. That's what made us late, your call stop. It was you not helping me up that hill, argued Donald. The Fat Controller swung round. But he wasn't cross. Congratulations, you two, he said. You two have just brought in your 50th goods train. Donald and Douglas were very surprised. 50 goods trains, said Donald. That's impressive. It is indeed, agreed the Fat Controller. As a reward, you will go to the works and have a new coat of paint and a boiler flush as well. You can also take tomorrow and the rest of today off too, he added. The twins were very excited. A boiler flush was a very rare reward. Thank you, sir, said the twins. They were uncovered from the goods train and they set off to the works straight away. Later, Donald and Douglas were at the works. Donald had had his boiler flush and was now having a new coat of paint and a polish. Douglas is up on the repair platform. Any boiler sludge of his has been emptied out of his boiler into a tanker next to him. Thomas and Toby are at the works too. Thomas's side rod had snapped. And Toby's cow catcher was bent. You know, said Donald, between the two of us, this is our third time to the works. Thomas and Toby were speechless. Did you ever go to the works on your old railway? They asked. Nay, said Douglas. We Caledonian engines were built to last. Of course, you had to come here when you smashed up Spiper Break onto smithereens. And when you ran your tender into the signal box, laughed Douglas. Thomas and Toby could only laugh. What are you going to do for your day off tomorrow? Thomas asked. We're going to visit Kirk Ronan Station, announced Donald. Why there? Because it reminds us of a station on our Scottish railway, said Douglas. That's nice, said Toby. Soon the twins are ready to go. We'll have the day off and then we'll go out tomorrow to Kirk Ronan, said Douglas. The twins set off. Good luck with your repairs, you two, Donald whistled. Thank you, called Thomas. Enjoy your days off, called Toby. We shall, they said, and they hurried away. The twins set out early next morning for Kirk Ronan Station. But as they rolled up onto the bridge, they saw Boko. You know, Boko, it's dangerous to be stopped on the main line, said Donald. I'm afraid I don't have much of a choice, Boko sighed. I've blown a fuse. And I'm stranded until help comes along. It's your day off, so don't worry about helping me. But I'd love it if you could send help from the next station. Don't be silly, said Donald. 
It may be our day off, but it doesn't mean we can't help a fellow engine. Okay, Douglas agreed. Boca was very happy. The twins began making the plans. Dougie, Donald called. Yes, Donald, Douglas answered. You take young Boko to the works. I'll take your tankers. Where are they bound for? Thank you. Uh, they need to go to Knapford. And it's settled then, said Donald. And so it was. So Douglas was coupled up to Boko. Boko was uncoupled from the tankers. And Douglas was set off. Thank you again, said Boko, as he was towed to the work. Donald then set off for Napa Station with the tankers. Soon Donald arrived at Napa Station. The fireman went to go and tell the station master about the change. While he was away, Donald's driver decided to give Donald a quick check over. You look like you could do with a drink, Donald. He said. Come on, I'll move you into the side then and you can have a drink at that water tower. So Donald was uncoupled from the tankers and rolled alongside the water tower. And his driver began filling Donald's tanks up with water. Eventually, Donald's fireman came back and told the driver that the station master was fine about the change. He was about to talk to Donald when he noticed something. Donald's face was as green as Henry's paintwork. He looked very ill indeed. Donald's driver jumped down to look. He found a ladder near the station and peered into the water tower. This water looks very sludgy, he said. I feel ill, Donald groaned. Just then the station master ran up. Oi, you, he called to Donald's driver. Get down from there. The driver did so, and the station master spoke severely to him. What do you think you're doing to the water tower? I was looking at the water, he said, pointing to Donald's face. It's very sludgy and is making him look ill. When was this tower last refilled? Donald's fireman asked. This morning, said the station master. Diesel brought in two tankers this morning. One of them was filled with boiler sludge from the works, the other was filled with water. Donald's driver gasped. Oh dear, he said, I know what the problem is. The workmen must have mixed up the tankers and put boiler sludge in the water tower and sent the water back to the mainland. Everybody was surprised, including Donald who could only make horrid gurgling noises from his boiler. Murdoch was sent to take Donald away to the works. Workmen arrived to inspect the water in the water tower. And a large notice reading out of order was placed near the tower. Murdoch pushed Donald into one of the works sidings. That controller soon came to speak to him. An engine taking on their own boiler sludge in a water tower. That's the first of the railway, he said. Then the fat controller looked serious. The workmen here are doing their best to make you feel better, said the fat controller. However, at these works, I don't have the correct equipment for removing boiler sludge from an engine's water tanks. But I know just the railway which does. You see, Donald, I've recently had a phone call from your controller on your old railway. He says he's short of help and needs two engines to help with the workload. You see, while he has ordered two extra engines from the mainland, they won't be coming for an, the next few months. I told him about your predicament and he said he'd be more than happy to provide help for you. Donald was shocked. He and Douglas hadn't been to their old railway for many years. Now, it's getting late and I haven't time to find Douglas. 
will you let him know about your return trip to Scotland the next time you see him, please? I wonder where Dougie is now. Douglas is waiting at Kirk Ronan Station for Donald. Donald must be in trouble, said Douglas. He's never usually this late. So with that, Douglas set out to find his twin.